bison. <clears throat> this mighty mammal roamed this great nation for centuries, in herds a bajillion members deep. Docile giants nearly hunted to extinction, they persist in the wild, surviving and plotting their next move, their revenge. They will take this revenge. Here, on the pickleball court, it's the Bison Paddles Raw Carbon Fiber Double Header Review. First things first, thanks to Bison Paddles for sending these out so I could hit with them and give you all my thoughts. I know I'm a pretty small potatoes content creator right now, so I appreciate them taking a chance on little old me. All right, I'm gonna make this very simple for y'all and say it at the start. I like these paddles, and I truly think they'll do a lot of things for a lot of people across many, many skill levels. They're also pretty cute. The design is subtle, but distinctive. Do they reinvent the wheel? Not that I'm aware of, but they provide a cost-effective and very functional version of this proverbial wheel, along with a cover for it. One thing to address before I go on. Even if I like both paddles, I still have my own personal preferences. Most of the time I played with the Summit, which is the 14mm elongated shape, over the Rampage, which is a 16mm square shape with a slightly shorter handle. I just prefer the shape of elongated paddles. Because I do. Even so, I played several games with the Rampage, and had some of my friends who are more accustomed to square paddles also play with it so I could get in more reps and more data across a few different people. Anyway, the main draw for me with these paddles is that they offer a very economical way to access raw carbon fiber surfaces. For those that don't know, RCF is a paddle face material that's supposed to allow for a softer feel off the paddle as well as really good spin control. And I'd say it succeeds there. I don't know how much the raw carbon fiber actually makes the touch feel any softer. I feel like for me that's largely based on paddle thickness with the gearbox paddles kind of being the weird exception in that they're really soft for being so thin. But raw carbon fiber really does help with ball control and spin and shaping and stuff. Watch any pro event, lots of the top players have some form of RCF faced paddle. It's hot, and I think it works. I'm focusing a lot on touch and spin right now because I think those are the two things that are generally lacking in paddles below this $100-ish price point. You can hit hard with any paddle, and I think you can find some decent all-power paddles in the like $50 to $80 range, but I think they lack a lot of the soft touch and control, so that's kind of where I'm starting to make the distinction here. Both of the Bison paddles feel pretty soft on resets and dinks, with the Rampage kind of edging out the summit, mainly because of the shape and the thickness, but I didn't feel like I was really lacking on reset ability with the summit, as that was the one I was playing with more often. Below this $100 price point, you also find a lot of super smooth paddles, like Baby's Bottom Smooth, or My Bottom. I moisturize. I can already hear the comments though. But Nick, spin isn't all about the paddle, it's a lot about user technique, there's face deformation and all sorts of- Yeah, 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 I know, I know. True, I've seen some folks rip nasty spin purely off technique alone, but a more textured face makes spin and shaping much more accessible to a larger variety of skill levels. Several of the most basic shots in pickle, like forehand and backhand drives, will naturally have a bit of topspin. A more biting surface almost passively increases the effectiveness of those shots, as it'll impart more spin, kind of on its own. You don't need to be like cranking big slices to get use out of raw carbon fiber, but the material also really helps with those. All right, now I'm gonna focus on each specific paddle for a bit. Up first is the Summit. Out of the box, this paddle was a bit light for me, so I bumped the weight up to around 8.2-ish ounces, just adding weight at the throat. 
Adding weight also increased the overall stability on resets and defense. I felt like it was a bit shaky right out of the box, but like that's par for the course with light paddles. I really liked the handle length on this one, and the fairly slim neck taper makes everything feel even roomier. Backhand drives were really, really comfortable. You know, assuming I wasn't messing up all the other parts of the backhand form, but whatever. I could do with the octagon of the handle being more pronounced, but I also overgrip because I got sweaty, sweaty hands. And the overgrips always kind of soften the handle shapes, so eh. The sweet spot also felt pretty average. Not thermoform levels of hitting goodness across the entire paddle, but also not as hot cold as like gearbox paddles or other things like that. It's right in the middle, and I'm totally cool with that for like a single Benjamin. Even at 14 millimeters thick, resets felt pretty easy with this paddle, only if my form was really really bad did I start to mess them up. I'd say go for the summit over the rampage if you're already comfortable with an elongated shape paddle, you want a little bit more readily available power than the rampage, or you're kind of short like me and you need every little bit of extra length that you can possibly get. Alright, now onto the rampage. Normally I really dislike square paddles, they feel a bit big to me and a bit like pushing a sail through the air, or like one of those big old timey royal fans, but this one was honestly okay. The rampage is a little bit heavier than other square paddles that I've used, but the weight was pretty balanced across the entire thing, so I didn't feel like the weight was slowing my hands down like a more head heavy paddle would do, so that was good. This paddle's natural weight also helps a little bit more with the push through and stuff, since it's 16 millimeters, balls will kind of just drop off the face and straight into the net if you don't follow through. It still has an octagon handle, but it's a much more squarish octagon because it's a thicker paddle. That's kind of how it works at this price point. And that means I like the handle less than the summits, but that doesn't seem to matter for everyone, but it is worth noting if you prefer a 16 millimeter square. If you're really into resets and your short game, then this paddle is gonna be kind of the one for you, I would say, of the two. Or if you're super long and don't really need to worry about this paddle giving shorter reach, then maybe this is more your speed. One thing I can't really comment on with these paddles is the long-term durability, as I've only had them about a month. Although I do play at least four times a week for like two to four hours at a time, and I have yet to notice any significant breaks or degradation. That being said, the paddles do have a six month warranty, so all you super bangers out there can rest easy if you are snapping paddles left and right or whatever. I don't know, that's not me, but go you. Bison Paddles doesn't really do anything new with this paddle tech, but what they have done is introduced some historically more premium features at a price point that doesn't normally have them, as well as provide nicer amenities than some of the Amazon brands that are doing the same thing. By doing that, I think what they've done is created a paddle that will serve beginners looking to upgrade out of their like two-for-one Walmart deal paddles, as well as more competitive players that are looking for something that's tournament ready, but that's a little bit more wallet friendly. 100 bucks is quickly becoming the new standard for super solid all-comer paddles, and I think it has been for like the last couple of months, but now it's even more true. And for me, the only reason to really look past this price point is to acquire more premium tech, like a thermoformed paddle with edge foam or something like that, or if you have really specific brand loyalty. Speaking of branding, Bison Paddles donates a portion of their profits every year to the National Buffalo Foundation, an organization focused on American bison preservation, as well as the curation of their heritage and legacy. I personally think it's nice that Bison Paddles is doing a bit more than just paying lip service to this iconic American bovine. So that's kind of my review of the Summit and the Rampage. All in all, I don't think they reinvent the wheel, but I don't think that's the point of the paddles. I think the point of the paddles is to provide a really solid, all-around competitive or recreational paddle that's not gonna break the bank and that's gonna add a few more little nice features that don't always come with a paddle at this price point. And I think it succeeds there. I really like it for that. And a lot of people in my local groups have been really intrigued by not only the value proposition, but the performance of these paddles. Um, and I'm inclined to agree with them. Not everyone's gonna need a super, super intense paddle to get exactly the kind of plays that they wanna get out of a piece of equipment. And I, I don't think these set out to kind of guarantee any sort of crazy abnormal performance, like the droppiest and resettiest of soft paddles or the most powerful of super powerful power paddles. But that's, again, I don't think what they're for. They do everything pretty well and they don't do it with too many frills, but they do it and they do it, yeah.
I'm saying the same thing over and over again. The other nice thing about these paddles, I would say, is that since they're relatively cheap, you can get a couple of them for the price of an otherwise more premium paddle. It's a great way to have like a second paddle for a friend that's kind of coming into the sport or a backup or whatever, uh, in addition to having something to really crank on tournament day. If you think either one of these paddles is for you, use code BP2023 at checkout and you'll get 15% off just to show that you watched the review, did your due diligence, you're an informed consumer, all that sort of stuff. You know, the good things. Stay tuned for the Oso oh Fury pickleball review coming soon. That was pretty good. And I'm glad because that just took like 20 tries, so I didn't want to do it again. Bye.